But he's actually got quite a fort. It might be a fence. The pectoral fence. Oh, yeah. A huge yeah, difference yeah. there. So, uh -huh. in the worst images by far. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure you took it away. Oh, this is fake. Pierce a little hole into the camp. So that the area is actually on top. Where well, you just write down what what kind of page it was, where you took it, who took the samples. And on the back side of that, to make it very easy for you, there's just a checklist where you can just tick everything as soon as you've done it. And it's also in the order that you should take the samples. So you basically just have to run down the protocol and you're fine. Um, so first of all, very important for me is taking pictures. <coughs> That's the first step. Next step would be, it's very important for me that the samples are very, very fresh. Um, because otherwise if tissues just change, and especially the microbiology, if the fish has been lying around at the riverside, it's not very much use to take microbiology to samples or anything. So ideally, the fish is still alive when you arrive, and then you kill the fish and take all the samples as quickly as possible. And then as soon as the fish is dead, um, we take the blood samples before the blood starts clotting. So that's the first step. Um, we turn the fish upside down, mm -hmm. like that, and go in behind the anal fin. Again, 45 degree angle. I'm not sure if we can draw blood from those fish because they've been dead for quite a while. Um, you basically go in with the needle until you can feel the spine, draw back a little, and then just try to get some blood. It's just to show you where to take it. You, take the, uh, you put that in the sampling tube, and you just put it on ice, and on the ice pack, so that it gets nice and cold. And there's three different agar plates. They all have different colors in me, uh, with me, because I always like having different colors so that you can actually distinguish between everything. So you would have six agar plates, but it's three different kind of agar because I want you to take samples from the skin lesion and from the skin that's unaffected and a little bit further away from the skin lesions, like two or three centimeters <coughs> further down the fish, um, so that I can compare the different bacteria that are growing on the lesions and on the unaffected skin. First of all, there's a swap in all of your... Hello. Take an agar plate and make a small well just by gently rubbing it to this agar. Sterile loop. You have three sterile loops per agar plate. Um, you open it up. Take three streaks from your well just across the whole plate like that. Swap. Take another three streaks from the last three ones, mm -hmm. just across the agar field again, like that. And then you swap loops again, and then you just make the zigzag, as in the last practical. It's just a lot more effort. <laughs> and as I said, you repeat that for three, the three different agars, and then you repeat the whole thing for normal skin as well. Yeah, ideally you label it so that I know which ones are from the skin lesions and which ones are from the healthy skin, so that I can compare more easily. <laughs> um, and then what I want you to do, since you're probably sending the samples back via just mail or anything, is to seal the agar plates, and you all should have something like that yes. on yours, just working. It looks a bit shorter than um, the agar plate, and what is what you do, it's very, very flexible, so you can just pull it around the edge so that the lid and the dish and the petri dish are just connected to each other and it sticks to itself. So you just go round it until it looks like that. Or the agar plates upside down so that the agar is actually on top. So if you get any condensation, the water is not dropping onto your agar plates so that you don't contaminate it with environmental bugs. So always keep it upside down. Now we're moving on to virology. 
Um, I have two separate transport dyes per fish because I want to take skin samples and they are much more contaminated with just bacteria and everything so I don't want to mix them with the sterile organs. So you have one vial for just the skin samples and one for the internal organs. So we're just using one at the moment. Um, the virology samples have to be quite small. Um, ideally what you, what you do is um, if you have a skin lesion, they should be about one gram, so it should be about that size. It's very, very tiny. Um, and you just cut it out of the fish, as I said, at the rim of the lesion. It's smaller. It doesn't have to be very deep because the main disease is just in the epidermis, so in the topmost layers. So you don't have to go very deep, it's just very superficial. So if you stick to like two, three millimeters in depth, that's plenty. And you put that in the transport media. That's the virology sample. That one has to be kept on ice as well. So that goes to the blood sample. Um, then the next step would be histopathology and electron microscopy. Electron microscopy is a very tiny sample as well. Um, oh, I didn't do any drawings or anything. Um, the measurements should be in the hand of the, so how big the lesion should be. The tricky bit with the electron microscope is, again, at the edge of the lesion. And what I want you to do is, um, because the whole sample, once it's processed, is black and you can't distinguish which way is up and which way is down, um, we need to cut it in a very specific way so that we can see which way would be which. Um, so what you do is you cut out a square about two, three millimeters in square at the surface, and then you cut like a triangle shape downwards, mm -hmm. which is quite tricky. And when I tried to demonstrate it last time, it was a bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> try to cut it as a triangle while on the fish, because otherwise it's not working, <laughs> out of personal experience. <laughs> so um, just try that. So take a tiny bit of skin, about that size and then go, just go down for a couple of millimeters in a triangle shape. Mm -hmm. It's basically from the skin lesion and then even if the operculum is not affected, I would still like you to sample one of them because there's not that many references in how the tissue normally looks, so it would be good to have it as a negative control for me. Um, so what you do is just cut out a bit of skin that can be bigger than the electron microscopy and the virology, but shouldn't be bigger than the centimeter, say. Um, you just cut out skin samples again like you did before and the operculum. Put it in formalin pots, which would be about that size. Half a centimeter to a centimeter. Basically about the same size and yes. in the last practical. The brain is in that area. First of all, you cut open the skull just by cutting like that until you can see the brain. But yeah, as I said, I think it's easier if you take a big knife with you. And you can see the brain here. You just cut like a box around the brain, because getting the, bo the brain out is very, very tricky and you're more, more likely to just destroy the brain. So it's easier if you cut out like an area around the brain, just like that. And that's why we take all the other samples before. <laughs> And we do the same in front of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and at the sides. So we're taking quite a bit of the skull out of the side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You only have one lesion. Um, the histopathology and the electron microscopy have priority about everything above everything else. So if you don't have enough, just put the lesions in electron microscopy and histopathology. Then the next one would be virology, and then if you still have some left over, just put it in the um, ethanol. But yeah, that's the kind of ranking. So yeah, and then basically all the internal samples are like Paul described them before. Okay. Okay, and that should be it. Do you have any?